All right, hey guys, it's Tofu. We're back with another podcast. Uh, we're we're gonna be doing an email podcast today. Um, we have a couple fan mails to read. Here with me today, we have the usual crew. It is me, O Tofu. Uh, we have Mathman Two Hundred. Say hello. Why, hello there. We have Atro, Knife Bird. Hello. Man of many names, and we have Ryuk Apples as well. Say hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey. All right, so. Uh, we have a few emails to read today. Um, we have three long emails. Uh, by the way, you guys can send your emails to daylightcastpodcast at gmail.com. I'm sure I'll plug it in at the end of the, at the, end of the podcast as well. But we try to read these uh, whenever we can. And we'll probably... Uh, would you guys agree that we'd probably be, we'll probably be doing separate emails or separate podcasts for emails? Because yes. yeah. we, 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 like we were tagging them on to the end of podcasts for a while, but it's, it's so hard because then we end up like not being able to talk about them as much as we want to. But, yeah, so we're going to be doing that from now on. And we're going to start with uh, an email that we got from Smith. Smith Splattered. Um, all right, so this is long. Uh, we, we may or may not have biffed up a recording of this before where we got through about half of it. Did you guys want to do it the same way where we take turns reading because of how long this shit is? Yep, let's do that again. All right, I can go first if you want. It doesn't matter. Sure. All right, all right. Here's the email. All right, from Smith. All right, you dorks, it's me again, coming at you with another email. This time, we ain't talking about combat straps or tofu dis and other things he know nothing about. This time, we talking about everyone's favorite pedophile, Freddy Krueger, and how to make his power not shit. I've theorized a lot about the dream world, or about how the dream world should work, since obviously if you get rid of the dream world, you basically get rid of the entire concept of Freddy that made him so unique in the first place. My view is that the dream world should, should either be one of two things. Either getting survivors into the dream world is harder, and while, the, and while, and, wait, sorry, I'm reading this wrongly. Getting, getting survivors into the dream world is harder, and it can be easy to get them out of the dream world. That's because the dream world is incredibly hostile to the survivor, and they want to get out as fast as possible. Or, getting survivors into the dream world is easy, but then it's harder to get out of it. Being in the dream world isn't very hostile to the survivor. Currently, the dream world is easy to get into, easy for, the, easy for the survivor to get out of, and not hostile to the survivor. Only a really boring and unfun flat action speed reduction. That does not match up with one of the two possibilities I've listed above. Of those two possibilities, I see the first option would be the better choice, as it would be more interactive and engaging to the players involved. Thus, the rest of my email from, uh, from my idea for Freddy is based on that line of thought. Okay, so, just real quick, I think that's a really cool concept. Like... He basically, like, he's basically saying, like, before he gets into any of this at all, that his vision of Freddy's power should be his, fir his first suggestion, which was getting survivors into the dream world is hard, and then it's, it's decently easy to get out of the dream world, but while the survivors are in the dream world, it's incredibly hostile, is what he says. Like, that's how he describes mm -hmm. it. That's, like, his vision of how it should be, which is interesting. I think that's cool. Because he is kind of right about, like, right now, it is super easy to get survivors in, it's super easy to get out, and being in the dream world barely does shit, you know, like it's it, it does. I don't know. It, it does. It doesn't seem that as threatening as it could be. Anyway, it's really more just like a slight inconvenience. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's exactly. Freddy in general. It's just a slight inconvenience. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Like, it's not very. Yeah, like it could definitely be more. All right. Continuing on. Uh, where did I leave off? <laughs> okay. Now let's discuss what Freddy loses in my idea. Freddy loses his complete invisibility and his lullaby now reaches out to the standard 32 meter radius of all killers. Freddy will instead give visual signs of survivors not in the sleep world when not completely having his model shown. This would look like a silhouette composed of the swirling ash from Freddy's dream world. Some other visual touches could be as Freddy passes near a wall, sparks appear as if Freddy was raking his claws against it like he did in the film. This gives survivors an actual visual rep visual rep representation, I cannot say words today, of Freddy to hide against if they choose. So, he also says that Freddy will also receive no aura reading abilities for survivors in the dream world. That means actually escaping Freddy doesn't mean he can just turn all the way around, see a red order, 
aura and then resume the chase. Freddy will actually have to find you again. That's pretty neat. Like, that's pretty cool, too, because he's suggesting that, like... Wait. Okay, so he's suggesting that he's not completely invisible. See, it's weird to me, because he says that he's not completely invisible, but then he also says that, like... When you can't see Freddy, you'll see things like... Like, does he mean that, like, he flashes? Like, how, how are you guys taking I think, that? So I think I what think... he means... Oh, you go ahead, Muffman. No, you go first, you go first. I, w I think what he means is, right now, Freddy is just, you know, completely invisible, except for when he walks through grass, you can see the grass move. And I think what he wants is that Freddy is still invisible, but he leaves a lot of signs that he's there. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, too. Okay, okay. See, he got me with the with the first line where he just says loses his complete invisibility. But I guess what he means by that is saying like all the stuff he, he has. That he leaves. Yeah, because Freddy right now has no cues that he's there except for the little boy. Yeah, basically little boy. Then if he walks through grass, you can see it better than that. Yeah, like this idea is super cool too. To be honest, like I love the idea of like if he goes near walls, it like sparks the walls. That's so fucking cool, dude. Like, I'm not even a huge, like, classic horror movie fan or anything, but even that's, like, oh, that's so cool, dude. Like, I know I've seen that from movies, and I just, that's such a cool concept, you know? So, it even plays into gameplay, you know? Before, before we get into, like, the, like, right now, I've heard of, like, two huge nerfs. The fact that you can see more of Freddy, and the fact that he can't see you in his nightmare when you go away, right? So can we... Can we finish the complete concept of the killer? Like, the 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 proposed change? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, right now, I'm there's commenting a lot on it and just saying, like, okay, yeah, I, I want to hear the full rework or else I'm not going to be able to understand. Yeah, see, because that, that was a small section that was called Let's Discuss What Freddy Loses, and now we have a right. giant section of Let's Discuss What Freddy Gets. So, trust okay, me, awesome. he's, he's going to get some shit. Does anyone else want to take over? I am struggling to read today. I don't know what's wrong. I think it's because I just woke up. Yeah. Maybe I'm Someone just going to read it. Pull up the email, then I'll take the honors. Unless Mathman is burning to, to read. Ooh, are you trying to ask me out here to run around a killer and read? I got this. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I can, so. I can, oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll just start. I'll, I'll get start on this paragraph while HO does something. Sure. Oh shit, I just clicked off of it. I, I'm, I'm just gonna read. <laughs> you got this. Alright, you got it. Just fucking go into it. You got right. it. Now, let's discuss what Freddy gets. A complete rework of the Dream Demon power. The easiest way to describe it would be a mix of Huntress and Doctor. Dream Demon is now no longer a short-range auto-target. Instead, it changes to a longer-ranged, fast-moving projectile that Freddy must actually aim and hit a survivor with. When Freddy hits a survivor with the Dream Demon, it begins a normal transition sequence. But what changes is now Freddy can continue to use his power during the chase. By aiming and throwing the dream, dream demon at pallets and windows, Freddy brings them into the nightmare and modifies them for survivors that are asleep. Similar to survivors, however, there is a time transition that also visually marks that object as transitioning over. For windows, for example, ash will begin to swirl and fill it up. Using the dream demon on windows will block them off temporarily. As it begins to transition, ash will swirl and begin to fill the frame of the window. The transition will take 3 seconds. When it completes, the window will be completely walled off to the survivor in the dream. Windows will remain blocked for 3 seconds, after which the, wall, the ash wall collapses. Using the dream demon on pallets will turn the pallet into a wall for the survivor. As it begins to transition, the ash will swirl and begin to form into sharp spikes on the pallet. When it is completed, the spikes will shoot up or off the side of the pallet, depending on if the pallet is up or down. If a survivor is caught as the spikes shoot up, the survivor will be injured by the spikes. After the spikes shoot up, they will begin to recede back into the pellet, leaving the pellet unusable for two seconds. Can I just... <sighs> okay. Can I, hold on. Like, yeah. I, I feel like we should talk about this. Because I actually There's have like a... There's like two more things that the power does to objects. Like two more objects yeah, that will... Let, yeah, let him, let him finish the whole power. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, okay. I'm with you. Okay, okay. I definitely have a lot to say. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, using the Dream Demon on generators turns generators into a hidden trap. If a survivor attempts to use the generator after it was brought into the dream world, one of two things may occur. If a survivor using the generator is sleeping, then upon interacting with the generator they will face a skill check similar to overcharge. Failing the skill check results in two metal arms bursting from the gen and grabbing the survivor, similar to Jennifer's big break in Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. 
Okay, a survivor will have to struggle out of the grip. This is completed similar to how one wiggles out of the killer's grasp. Other survivors are able to wake the survivor up while grabbed, but it will take longer than a norm normal wake-up action. Freddy is alerted to grabbed survivors. If the survivor using the generator was awake, then nothing will occur until the generator is completed. Right before it is completed, all survivors working in the gen will face a skill check similar to overcharge. Failing the skill check results in one metal arm bursting out and swiping at the survivor and then that survivor is put into the dream world. Using dream, the dream demon on hooks turns the hook into a hidden trap. Upon hooking a survivor, survivors already in the dream world will instead see their last hook dream demon has been used on as the proper location. If a survivor goes to the dream demon hooked, dream demon hook and attempts a save, the survivor will again face an overcharge skill check. If failed, the hook will lurch forward and hook into the survivor, then lift them up. The survivor will have to wiggle out similar to above, but the time they spend wiggling out will subtract from their hook time. This means if a survivor spends 10 seconds trying to wiggle out, 10 seconds are subtracted from the hook stake. <sighs> Alright, that's the power. Alrighty then. My fucking tongue hurts. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first thing I want to say is, where's the cooldown? Like, yeah, right. That, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Like, how spammy is this? Like, could you just go around chucking dream demons at everything, you know? Right. So that that's my number one concern. My yeah. number two concern is um, Freddy's power seems like he's getting, like, three extra perks with no... Like, do you know Outside. what I mean? Like, yeah, he doesn't need overcharge. He doesn't yeah. need uh, the anti-sabo for hooks. He doesn't need... Um, things like that, just because it's all incorporated into this power. Um, I, I don't, I don't view Freddy's sleep as kind of like a missile. I don't view it as like a chucking a dream demon. If, if anything, I would view it more as like a doctor slash Michael Myers, where he, he focuses on putting them into the nightmare, like, like putting them into a deep sleep, like, like basically channeling on a survivor, like, like the Sandman, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like putting them to sleep while he like slowly focuses on them while they're in like line of sight or something, something, something to that effect. I, I do agree with the fact that I would love the nightmare to actually be a nightmare for survivors to be in. Um, I, but this, this sounds almost uh almost too oppressive to the point where like um the the activity in chases now you're just shutting down every single resource i don't i don't know how how as a survivor i can outplay that right yeah i feel like it's going to come down a lot to like to kind of like you said like like cooldowns and shit cuz okay like he 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 talks about how you can block windows and stuff or like turn pallets into walls but like, and and I think I think he said it lasts three seconds, right? So, like, hypothetically, if the cooldown was like, like say if you can only use it on like one thing at a time, and then the cooldown's like I don't know, ten seconds or something. Like if it's something like that extreme, I mean I don't think it would be that extreme because that would probably be unbalanced as far as even just putting people to sleep. Like if you missed, it would be terrible. But you know, I don't know. Like I feel like say if you're running at shack and he shuts down the window. You could either just go to a new tile or, you know, do, like, do something. It's, I, I feel like it's right on the same lines of, like, clown kind of shutting shit down, you know? Where, like, a lot of the time the correct yeah. play is just to go to another tile, you know? Or, like, use the other thing that's in the tile. Like, I feel like it could be balanced assuming the cooldown. Like, if there is, if there is like, almost no cooldown and Freddy's able to just walk around the map shooting dream demons at everything at all times, like... That would be kind of ridiculous, you know? Because he literally so, can shoot dream demons at everything, man. Hooks, yeah. gens, walls. Or not walls, gen, or windows, fucking... You know, windows, pallets, hooks. Yeah, it's crazy. Gens. Basically anything a survivor can interact with. Let's say, yeah. let's say it has... Well, okay, here's here's the thing. What I'm thinking about... When I'm thinking about a killer's power, right? When, when you're playing killer, you want to be able to use your power a lot. Like, that's... You know, that's the fun of the killer. You get to use your power whenever you want to, basically. Um, so I, I want it to be fun. So I don't want this, like, huge cooldown. But, like, let's say 10 seconds, right? Let's say 10 seconds for this, like, we can shut down a pallet. So in my eyes, if a killer is playing well 
and it can shut down a resource when they need to, right? I don't see the counterplay to the survivor where it's like, okay, with, with clown, you can throw the gas, but there are things that you can do, like one, avoid the gas, two, use a sprint burst, go through the gas, things like things like that where you can like kind of outplay it, right? But if we're talking like blocks windows or turns pallets into walls, it's like that's not even a resource anymore. And there there is no counterplay in my mind because it's basically just like, okay, well, I want a hit now. So I'm just going to uh, break down this defense and get the hit. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, like, can well... someone like give me a, give me a, devil's advocate on yeah counterplay. yeah i think i got you with that one because i i think my argument would be that he says that it takes like three seconds and it shows what's happening like for instance like if you're getting chased like let's say hypothetically like shack again is like this is the first thing that comes to my mind when i think of like a chase or like a strong window or something like say you're at shack and you're getting chased and like you know say like the pallet's down or something or even if the pallet's not down, like say he, like say Freddy just like 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 just decides to shut something down in the shack, like he'll shoot whatever that he'll shoot his like dream demon at it, and then you will you'll like know like you have three seconds before it actually gets blocked, and then it's only blocked for three seconds. So, you know you'd have time to like vault the window before it gets blocked, or just like go to another tile, and like I, I would also assume hopefully that he would get like slowed down doing it too. Like I'm just, I don't. If he was moving at like base speed while shutting shit down, that would be pretty broken. Pretty much every yeah, other killer gets just slowed. Run around. Yeah, 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 like every single yeah. killer gets slowed when they do their abilities. Like Clown is like the only one that even he gets slightly slowed when he throws it, but like pretty much so every then, So then at that point at that point he sounds like shit to me at rank one because if I'm playing against Graham, right? And he goes to Shaq, and I have bamboozle, right? So we go to Shack. I throw a Dream Demon at the the pallet. Pallet is no longer viable. I bamboozle through the window. Graham just goes to a different tile. Okay. Now I go to that tile, and my Dream Demon is still on cooldown, right? Or or I need to pull them back into the nightmare and get the three second debuff. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like switching to a different tile just sounds like okay. Well, this just didn't really solve anything. You know what I mean? Like. I mean a that's smart survivor can just go to a different That's kind of how I that's kind of how I picture Clown to be honest. I feel like that's what Clown does. Clown like shuts down tiles. I feel like when I play Clown that's usually what happens is people will then just go to new tiles. And I know what you mean. But like I think the main difference is that as Freddy, you have to work to get them in the dream world to then be as strong as the Clown always is, you know? Yeah, I would so, say I would say the Clown the Clown hinders you severely at a tile though. Where Freddy, Freddy doesn't, in my opinion. Freddy just kind of gets rid of the tile for a temporary amount of time and just forces you to go to a different tile. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? That's true. I, f I, I feel like. Go ahead. Yeah. I, what I just wanted to to say is, I feel like this rework of Freddy just kind of feels like a reverse nurse, whereas the nurse will just ignore everything you throw at her. Freddy, with this rework, will just not allow you to use anything you could throw at him. Right. To yeah, I agree. I that's, really wish that's something I've noticed with this rework. I, I I really like. I really wish it was somehow possible to play test this. You know, like obviously it'll never mm -hmm. be, but because I'm really curious. Like I, I feel like just reading this, it could either be like oppressing or useless or even I don't know. It could, it could go either way. I really don't know because yeah. I feel like. And then I think about other things where like say like if you just finished using up everything at a tile like say there was like a single pallet or something and you used the pallet and then you went to the next tile and it was like maybe in like the corner of the map like if, if you then shut down that tile then you have nowhere else to go because the nearest tile is already used you know like i feel like maybe it could be strong I, I, yeah it just... I, I i really enjoy what what curl's saying in graham's stream right now he says i love the concept of trapping in non-lethal ways i i really enjoy that like like if That's you imagine like with the hags idea, yeah. Yeah, if you if you imagine this like something like like if they take the animation of Blood Warden, right? Like if Freddy can preemptively uh shoot the dream demon or or sabotage different assets that the survivor has when they're in the nightmare, right? So it's saying like if he shuts down window so that it has the the entity blocker on it, right? Or if 
uh, when you throw down a pallet, you get you get spiked with the Blood Warden spikes, so you're held in place for like a second, so that he gains on chase when you throw down the pallet. Something like that, right? That that section of this sounds really really interesting to me. But his in chase, his in chase use of his nightmare still sounds either really lacking to me, or it sounds like it could be overly oppressive. It doesn't sound like a good a good medium to me. Yeah, this sounds like it's either incredibly broken or just useless. Like, I don't think there's going to be an in-between for, for something like that. Right. Yeah. I, I do like the lasting effects, though, where, where you can you can modify resources, generators, things like that. That sounds pretty cool. But The, 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 the generator and hook ones kind of, like... It kind of made me make like the yikers emote face whenever you read him. To be honest, I like mm -hmm. I don't know why either. It just it sounds like a lot, you know. It just sounds really like crazy, like it's like fucking metal claws yeah. like coming out and grabbing you, and you got to wiggle for ten seconds. And Freddy's also alerted by it, and shit. Like, and then also it leads me with a lot of questions. Like, what happens if like. Well, like, what happens if Freddy's, like, near you while it happens, and then he just walks up to you while you're held in place for ten seconds? Like, can he just down you? Can he just hit you twice and down you while you're there? Like, I thought, does, I thought does he getting hit for you? what the email says. Or grab, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I guess, it, hold on. Yeah, it, it, it sounds very, very powerful, um, which I think is just coming off of the fact that Freddy isn't good. So, Smith wanted to make him start... start uh big and whittle down i suppose you know like with the idea yeah and um, it's also it's also cool because i think he's trying to actually make the dream state feel like a nightmare like he wants crazy shit to happen you know like which is cool like right. i do like that I, it'd be cool if this game had more shit like that you know like it doesn't even sound like something this game would be just because we haven't seen shit like that really ever but it would be I so cool something something interesting to me is if like you're in the nightmare that your your compulsion or fear automatically like threw down a pallet like if you walk through if you're in the nightmare and you're like running through a pallet right your your model will automatically or the nightmare will drop the pallet not in front of you but behind you you know what i'm saying like wasting mm -hmm. resources things like that like that that right there sounds like a fucking nightmare because if you're in the nightmare and you see these pallets being thrown, your team's like, oh shit, like all our resources are going away. Like you can't loop while you're in the nightmare. Things like that. I don't know. Like, yeah, never, that'd it, be kind of neat. Sounds, it sounds crazy, but. No, I mean, that's, I think, that's a pretty interesting idea. I think that's idea. a good idea. Because there's still like, it's it's, it's not just, it's, not, it's not like a brain dead mechanic, you know, like a no brainer mechanic because the survivor can still choose to just not loop while in the nightmare. Sure. They can be like, all right, I'm going to, I'm in the nightmare. I'm not gonna try to loop this killer now. I'm right, gonna you're... try to rely on windows, and that's yeah. still like a win for the killer because that's a resource gone for you. Mm -hmm. I think we should finish this email. We have like four more little yeah, pairs. Definitely, definitely. We have a lot. Okay. Uh, changes to the power to also result in changes of the add-ons. Add-ons that force that focus on decreasing the chances of skill checks in the dream world now reduce the amount of time it takes for an object to be pulled into the dream world. Uh, Movement speed. Wait, don't those already exist? Is it? I guess not. What the Z blocks are? I guess they just stack. What? Okay, he said add-ons that focus on decreasing chances of skill checks in the dream world now reduce the amount no, of time no, no, it takes no. for he an said object, object to be not in. person. He's referring oh, to the three so... second of delay on windows and pallets. Oh, okay. So like yeah, those. Thinking. So like those would be separate. There'd be an add-on for people and an add-on for objects. I guess. Yeah, for objects. Okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I just kind of figured what they all fit together. Be... What if there were only add-ons for objects, though, and no longer for people? It would always be the base time to pull people into the dream world. I mean, that, that might be neat, but I also feel like it would be okay to balance between the two, you know? Like, if you're using add-ons for people, then you wouldn't be able to use as many add-ons for objects, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. Uh, yeah, keep, yeah, keep going. Movement speed increasing add-ons instead increase the time it takes for survivors to wiggle out of dream world grabs. Range increase add-ons instead decrease the time to throw the Dream World Demon power, similar to Huntress's wind-up add-ons. Oh, apparently there's going to be wind-up. 
Uh, Add ones that, that increase movement speed after tagging a survivor remain the same, but the speed penalty is being has been increased to give survivors a bit more distance to run. See, there, there you go. I guess that's a thing too. So, I guess movement speed penalty is increased after putting someone in the dream state. In, in, in this uh, idea, just gotta say, no huntress lined up add ons. Why would like that's just a really bad suggestion in my opinion. Like, Huntress Windup is probably one of the least fun things ever in the game, so... Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that if mm -hmm. this was to be a thing, that that should be a thing. Well... That's, like, that's really shitty. I sort of disagree. Like, I agree that the Huntress Windup is probably the shittiest thing in the game, but I also think that's because the Huntress's ability straight up kills you. This doesn't kill you, it just puts you yeah, in the dream world, you know? Yeah, that's fair, but if you think you... about it, if he's considering Windup time, then that means he's referring to it. As let's say you're to throw a, a, a dream demon out at a pallet or a window, that also is a factor of the wind up time. So I think instead of a cooldown, he's going for wind up, similar yeah. to hunters. Like I don't know if there is a cooldown, right? That's true. So what that that would be really toxic because you're not only just like it's not about the actually affecting people; it's about the the time it takes to throw it at pallets and windows. So you could stack that with also the fact that objects can be pulled in faster if you want to do like a really aggressive sort of play style. I, I, I find with like objects being pulled in faster because it changes the dynamic of it and it makes it at least a little interesting, but straight up wind up is just, oh, like I, I throw it faster. You know, if, if I'm movement speed slowed, I'm slowed for less time. You know, it, it's just, it affects so many little things that are big time wasters in small fraction and it's just it's i don't know usually like those add-ons are unfun like if if powers were more strong in chases then throwing them out faster is always going to lead to a more unenjoyable scenario because you're taking something that's supposed to be balanced around the base time and then you're just flat out increasing it like that that's it yeah i gotta agree with that i, I again i don't think it would be as no, bad I don't think it would Freddy, be as bad, as bad, right? I, like, not, yeah. not an insta-saw or a wind-up, but I think, like, if, if the power is really strong and hostile, then if you're trying to balance it around it, I see it the same way as I'd see something that is hostile during chases, which is hatchets and, and chainsaw speed. Truth. Yeah, one thing that I um, wanted to say about the whole wind-up add-ons, too, is... It creates the possibility for a scenario, and that's you know that's already a thing in the game of Hillbilly and you know Hunter Satchets, where it's like okay, you're the first person found in the game, uh, you get found by the Huntress, and you, you're preparing to to run around a tile or whatever, and then she just insta hatchets you, and you take a hit that you couldn't have avoided because you had no way of knowing that she has yeah. insta windups. Well, even if you do know, it reduces the time, like. This game yeah. is all about time. It's all about planning. Everything's got a precise number to it, so you know how to play around it. The base 1.2 second Huntress, for example, because we don't know the exact time of wind-up on this, can go down to 0 0.7. That's 0 0.5 seconds. That's 2 meters that the, the survivor can run. Like, 2 meters difference is crazy. That's also 0 0.5 seconds of the Huntress not moving as slow, which is also crazy, because it means you can react faster afterwards. Right. Um, did we do we finish the email? I just want to make sure that we're no, okay. No. Let's. I think I think we got all our insta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just gonna read the whole thing. All right. Go On top of it. that, I, I was still going with the add-ons. Class photo now increases the amount of Dream World traps Freddy may Fr Freddy may place from base three to five with the add-on. Black box allows Freddy to see the auras of survivors transitioning to the Dream World for the entire duration. These ideas would, of course, uh, need to be fine-tuned if they were put into the game. Spoiler alert, probably not. <laughs> You're not wrong about that, Smith. The main basis came from the fact that Freddy is the master of the dream world, and I was very disappointed that they did not really put this factor into the game when making his power. I would like to hear your feedback on this incredibly long rework idea I probably put too much time in. Escaping the dream world remains the same as before. Sca failing skill checks while healing or while working on generators will do so, along with getting woken up by fellow survivors and, and, and from being hooked. I feel this doesn't need to be changed. It's already fairly easy to get out of the dream world, which is part of the point of the design where a survivor must quickly as possible flee the dream world. That's the whole email. I, I mean, I feel like we've already touched base on it a decent bit, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Smith is totally right. This will never be in the game. As much as I love this idea, I think the, the, the first time we, we, we okay, we tried to record this podcast a couple days here. ago, yeah, and then it, my computer fucked up and we lost it all. That's why we're redoing it 
I own this. So it's a separate day. But anyway, the first time we actually got into that a little bit, Mathman was talking about how hard all... The, I'm sure you know, too, Apples, how hard all of this would be to code and how right. behavior would not do it. They, imagine, they do it. Imagine, like, how much they'd have to go through for a single killer that, you know, oh, shit, that could still be just, like, <laughs> super mediocre or, you know, might still need more tuning to them, you know? You never... You don't know the end result and you're putting so much time into it and behavior is not one to take a long route to fixing something they're just going to change a number you know yeah. would you rather yeah. like have everyone program these art assets you know do the programming for everything to work fine all the different parts of it with the generators the hooks you know all all that stuff and the, the swiping after you complete a generator which is different from the grabbing and there's just like a billion and a half things to it, and I think that'd be an issue for them because it's just it's behavior, you know. They could fix a simple thing in a map, but they don't. You know, it takes them fucking two years to change one little thing about an object, and it's like, oh, right. that you know, that's that's what you get for the year. It's it's really bad, and of course they're busy. They gotta create new content as well. So going back into the past. It probably might increase sales a little bit, but is it going to make them more money than just creating a new killer? No. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So I also don't know the, the legal ramifications of changing oh, a that's license yeah, that's killer. Right. You also have the license. Yeah. yeah. They have an agreement on what Freddy looks like and what he does in the game, then that is probably very, very tightly agreed to. And if they were to reopen that Pandora's box, it might be an issue. Honestly, though, great ideas. I, I think it's, you know, I, I think that um, if you're a member of this community and you have great ideas like this, you know, think about think about rework changes. Think about different changes like this because uh, the, the devs honestly love these new ideas um, and they might incorporate them in killers to come, you know, like, like mm -hmm. these ideas that have been presented can be applied to different killers uh, in the future, which might be a really, really uh, breath of fresh air change. So nice. Yeah, I also just yeah. love talking about them too. Just like the hypothetical. Uh, it is always you know? interesting. Yeah, it's, it's cool to think about like, you know, what could be. Carl sends me a lot of his fan ideas too. They're really cool to read. Just on perks that he thinks are hey. just as a thing. Like I love, I love fan stuff. I love new ideas. You know, it gets the gears turning. Uh, they like has podcast at gmail.com, by the way. They like has podcast at gmail.com, by the way. <laughs> All right. Next email. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hit the next email. Okay. Next email. Wanted... Sorry, HO. What's up? <laughs> Been trying to say something for like the past. No, it's, <laughs> I just wanted to say I used to post a lot of fan stuff on the subreddit. Back in the more innocent days when I didn't realize how this game is just uh, riddled with problems. And now the so, subreddit yeah, is just filled with shit posts. Definitely. Oh yeah, that's a whole nother like can of beans, but I just want to say <laughs> I definitely love seeing people come up with creative ideas because you know I I know where they're coming from. I used to do a lot of that too. Yeah, it's it's day. cool. No, I just don't anymore because you know it's kind of Yeah, pointless. I mean I did too back in the solid uh three hundred hour math man. I used to have nice long posts like, Hey developers, you guys are doing a great job. Smile. I just wanted to give you some ideas because, you know, infinite duration Noad is not fun to play against. Smile. I just made, like, whole new killers that were kind of shitty, but hey. Alright, so we're going to go to the next email. This is an email from Bob. His name is Bob. He says, Dear Daylight Cast. Bobby. Fucking Bob, dude. First off, I'd like to ask you to not worry about how long you've been recording. Two and a half hours podcasts are perfectly acceptable in my book. Hearing you quit a thought halfway through due to, to due to time constraints kind of sucks. We tune in for the sole purpose of hearing those thoughts. After all, oh wait, sorry, that was in the same time. In the hearing those thoughts after all. Well, maybe some of us are just here for HO slash Nightbird slash Frank's dank memeing. Which, by the way, if anyone doesn't get that, if you guys might not get that, I think at the end of one of the podcasts, I was like... You know, saying who Atro was, and I was calling him by all his names, and I think we decided to call him Frank as just like a <laughs> joke. So anyway, sorry. 
But Atro's I or, or but Atro but Atro's ISP is face camping him, so I have to be content with your anti bloodlust rantings and such. <laughs> That's still happening, by the way. <laughs> nice, getting face camped by your ISP. Though his ISP didn't seem to bother him last episode, so maybe that's all better now. Anyways. It is a little better. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Anyways. Again yesterday, but still. <laughs> Good team in intro. I really like this game. I spent hundreds and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of hours on it. <laughs> Rank one for whatever that's worth many, many times. Bought all the DLC, bought some of their merchandise, and I frequently browse the subreddit. And according to listen, in addition of, of listening to your podcast every time it comes out, which makes this next part sound somewhat strange. I want this game to die. Nice, nice. Yes. All right. And after that, Semicolon D. yeah, right. That, that shit got crazy. What the fuck? And after all that, I want a sequel, preferably one where the code isn't made of spaghetti. I don't know about you guys, but I can see this game getting much better than it is now with the way things are being done. We wait months and months for some kind of issue to be fixed and then it gets fixed. No, sorry. He said can't see this game getting much better. Sorry, I misread. Uh, we, we, we wait months and months for some issue to be fixed and then it gets fixed or they try and fail to fix it and more crippling gameplay issues are introduced. If they make a sequel, though, and do it right, they can shed all the shitty bugs and issues we and they have made with this game. And find new bugs, I'm sure, but what game doesn't have bugs? Imagine a Dead by Daylight where the maps and killers are balanced enough that Bloodlust doesn't have to exist anymore, or does exist, but differently imagine all the perks in the game are way, way weaker, but more fun to play with. Generators have more depth to them and hold M1 and hit spacebar, and, and no longer have to hold, hold, hold M1 and hit spacebar occasionally. No more nurse. I could go on, but I think you get the gist. I don't know if you agree or not, but if you think this game might benefit from starting over in a sequel, I'd love to hear slash chat you about it, about what your ideal version of this game would look like. Sincerely, Santiago. Wait, I thought his name was Bob. Is it Bob or Santiago? Got dude, we got it's debated. Bob Santiago, dude. Bob yeah, Santiago. I say, ah, I got famous. it. Fuck, man. Isn't it, uh, isn't it crazy how this email was written like back in February? And it like lists the exact same problems that like still prevail. Yeah, today. no, it's it's like at least nine months, dude. That's oh, if that's that's how this game works, though, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean that really is did how you, it works. Did you just scream at being chased by a wraith? Yeah, on, well, he unclogged, and I wasn't paying attention, and then I paid attention. Yikes! Um, that's the thought of paying attention. Right there. I mean, yeah. First of all, thanks for it's taking the time success. to write the email. Uh. Second thing is, I completely agree. Um, I think that a lot of changes can happen in this game, and I think they should. Um, I don't, I, I don't know what the possibility of a Dead by Daylight two is, but honestly, I think that this, I think that behavior is honestly doing well, and I think that we are gonna see like new games and content coming out from them. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I'm definitely gonna be a, a proponent of playing their games. I would hope. Um, but yeah, I, I think that one of the biggest takeaways from this is uh, if I were to give a little uh, tap on the shoulder to behavior, I know there's a multitude of reasons why things don't happen at a certain time and whatever, but um, the what, what's the, the saying? The proof's in the pudding or whatever? The, it's, proof's in it's, the pudding? What? Yeah, isn't that, isn't that a saying? I've never heard that. I like right, I'll, I'll look it up later. I'll look it up later. Yeah, I'm just an old man. Anyways, um, the the fact that the community and our podcast and people talk about the the same things and they're they're prevalent and haven't been fixed or changed i think is a very very uh, critical issue in terms of uh, behaviors response time to actual issues because um there, there's still problems you know what i mean like there's still problems that just haven't been fixed and they're very core common problems that are basically embedded in everything. So I think, I think this, this email brings up a great point where it's, we shouldn't, we shouldn't lose sight of um, problems just because they've always been there. Um, I think a lot of people just kind of gave up on it and just said, well, that's just how the game is. And it's like, well, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that way. It, it really doesn't. Um, Amen. So that's that's what I'm getting out of this email. Yeah. See, I feel like this, like, I don't know. I, I feel like emails like this, I also have no idea about anything coding-wise. Because, like, that, that seems to be the general idea, right? Is that, like, they're kind of saying that, like, this code's, this game has spaghetti code. And, like, I feel like a lot of, I've heard so many people say this. Where people are, like, 
this game was just like terribly coded so when they try to fix things it fucks up other things and it's like too bad like it would be good if they just started over i don't know shit about coding so i don't know if that's like a thing or not but like if that really is a possibility where like if they just started over if like changes can be made easier then yeah dude by all means because you are right about the whole response time thing it really is true i mean look like ironworks window infinite is still in the game two years later and you know long win long wall windows in general are still in the game yeah, yeah, like for like two years, you know, and, and they then keep being added too. Yeah, yeah, on top, yeah, on top of that, new maps are getting them. Yeah, and it's just like, and like things are being done. Like it's not like we could sit here and say that that like the devs don't care and that they're shit. No, because like they are making changes. You know, they are working hard to do things. It's just like, it takes so long. It's like Apple said, it takes so long, and I don't know like what the problem is. I don't know if it's just because they have a small team or if it is because like. Maybe the code is bad, and maybe like making a simple change ends up being complicated because of. I don't. I really don't know. Like I don't know what, what exactly the issue is. But I do agree that like I would love to see like a better response time. However, the hell they can do it, you know. Yeah, I, I'd sure. like. I want to just talk about response time because I always thought like fastest response time was like best thing ever, but there's certain issues where some developers like. Are, are too fast about it and fuck something up because it hasn't fully been like noticed, right? Like if you patch right. something like instantly after a couple days, you might completely ruin something, you know, like it. Really? Yeah, no, that's a good one. Like it was so fast done. Like it put him in such a bad spot. Like I think Freddy was fine to do that too. Cause he was so unenjoyable to play against, but they didn't fix the problem. They just removed the killer from the game. That's their solution to it. That was their quick solution remove them from the game like there's things where you got to be patient but if you take nine months to remove bear traps under hooks when that was something that had been talked about for days every single day someone complained about it like how obvious like how much do you need to see before it's obvious to know that that's a problem it yeah. shouldn't take nine months yeah that it shouldn't that... take more than like two months i think that should be in the game for maybe one six week cycle that's it. It should be gone by the next six week cycle, because they're doing patches in six week cycles now. So right. it's, it's right. Not so their right. schedule. So we should hold them about like, hey, this is a change that I don't think should take more than six weeks. Like it shouldn't be in the game for more than one of your 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 patches. Yeah, so I cannot we, believe that that was in the game for that long. Nine That's, months. Nine yeah. months. So Actually, we, nine we, months. We have to we have to remember we have to remember some things here, boys and gals. All right. First, first off, Dead by Daylight was basically their first big, big game, right? Yeah, so like, of course. So they, they're, they were still in the child stages of getting that development stuff going, especially with the giant community that had eyes on them. First of all, second of all, um, the, the publishing, right? That that's a big swing because now they're their own bosses, right? So now we're starting to see a much faster response time. But when it comes to coding, right, when it comes to software release, there's always trade-offs. The faster you get something done, the less safe it's going to be. That's usually the, the rule, right? The faster you get something done, uh, the, the quality isn't necessarily going to be 100%, right? Because the, the time that you're trying to push it out the door is less time that you're testing it, less time that you're developing it properly, things like that. Things can happen. Mistakes are made. Um, I, I have an optimistic outlook with these uh, QA videos where they're talking about perk changes. There's just so many things that they, they are, um, in my eyes, being transparent and talking with us about, right? Where they're saying, like, these are our ideas. We want the community to mold this over. Like, everybody's talking about these new perk changes, right? Everybody's talking about, like, oh, a self-care rework, things like that. They're like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. But these other perk things sound pretty good. So if we see these decisions being made where it's just like, yeah, we heard you. We got the 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 perk changes coming in and we decided to leave out this specific one, right? Because yeah, we heard like, a lot of a lot of backlash or something like that. Yeah. That's that's the stuff that I see happening. And I think that's happening because they they're their own bosses now and they're they're able to make those decisions. So I'm pretty optimistic about it. Uh, I don't want to ramble too much, so I, that's that's basically where I want to leave it. No, I agree with you there. It's just like you know, I do get that, but there's just like some things, you know, and like still, even 
the whole thing of them being their own bosses, not everything's going to get fixed. That still isn't fixed. And I don't see map design ever being completely changed or, or fixed because you always have to work on the new map, you know? Right. So, like, it's when you make time if you're always constantly working on new maps. Like, I think the clown map was really well done to be a killer favorite map. It takes everything. You can't have a huge map where it's just going to be a snore fest like Swan. You know, you can't have, uh, what's it called? Like, windows that don't have somewhere that you can drop off. Like, all of the windows on the cloud map, there's multiple routes you can take. One will be the obvious play that they can loop you again. There's another one that might be a 50-50 because you jump off the backside and you'll catch them running in a certain direction. Or you could jump off a different direction and catch them running in, a, in another direction. Like, there's multiple of those, like, almost quote-unquote mind games where the killer's like, all right, the survivor's going to go either one of two directions. Which route am I going to take? Because that's the route he's either been running, I think he's going to run, or I'll have the likeliest chance of finding him there and then catching up to him if he runs, you know, or, or makes a second split suit and sure. turns back, you know, stuff like that. So... I don't know. I think the new map is, like, a, a lot better in map design. I personally think it's fine. I think old maps are a lot worse. Like, all the original maps that have come out still haven't been changed, really, at all. Except for the palette, you know, obvious changes on every map that affect everything. And the few palette changes they did with, like, that obnoxiously long loop on, you know, all the maps that was, like, the double palette loop that was a joke and you could run them like 18 times around it before dropping it and it was safe against Bloodless 3. Like, there's efforts being made, it's just I don't see the actual core buildings of maps ever being changed, such as long loop windows. And that makes me really sad. So here's here's a really, a really big issue, right? And I, I think this relates to the email because it goes back to like, I want this game to die and like come up from the ashes like a fucking phoenix, you know? Um, the, the issue with balancing or making changes to this game is if you make a change, like an optimistic change to one side, and by side I mean killer or survivor, the other side of the community will bitch. And it's, it's, it's hard to do because I don't think people have the prevalent thought to think of the game as a whole, rather no, than just the role, the role they yeah, enjoy just... playing. Uh, of course not, but it's, it's behavior is of... going to get fucking, like, if you're worried about, like, behavior getting shit-talked, you know, about something, is that what you're getting to? Like, they're just going to be trashed, regardless. N no, I'm, I'm worried, I'm worried about, um... I'm worried about the game's lack of interest, right? So I'm worried about the, the the base community, like I've had people just come in to this game saying, or you know, people come into my stream and they say if they go forward with this this move, I'm I'm not playing this game anymore. Right? Yeah, no, that's fair, but and it's 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 scary to me. Like just and it, it's not and I don't think it's people overreacting to some changes, right? I think it's I think it's a very uh, prevalent thing where the I don't want the devs to just be like calling people's bluffs with their changes you understand what i'm saying where it's just like no, we're gonna I, make this i was change. gonna say the exact thing because that yeah I, I get exactly what you mean because that yeah. is that, that could very potentially just be a bluff you know like oh i'm not gonna play anymore this changes in the game right and i don't um, want that to be based on like people's prowess in the game like like a uh, big shot streamer i'm a small streamer i want them to look at it objectively saying like you know i'm i'll, I'll say it here sorry to bash you devs you're not good at your game. Feels fucking bad, man. You guys don't know how to play your game. It feels well, bad. It's, just, it's how it is, you know. It's, right. It's a, it's a reality. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's but that's that's the reason they have people that play their game consistently. And I just want to make sure that that when when they're listening, right? They're just listening at an objective viewpoint from a lot of the people saying, not just streamers, right? I'm saying like people who play this game uh, and understand its core mechanics, or else or else it's just going to be lost. They're just going to come out with new fancy, sparkly content that might just be like the most OP shit in the world. And it's just like, please, please don't ruin this game. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I get what you mean. I feel like the problem is, is that nobody, like very, very few people will ever see both sides equally because people may in certain sides, you yeah. know, it's, it's just how it is. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm done talking about this subject. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. DVD two. Uh, my my last thought is that I don't think it'll be a thing because they added microtransactions. And like you yeah. said, you know, it'd be so nice if they started fresh. But I think I, I think that after adding microtransactions, that would never happen. You know, like that was kind of the set in stone that it won't be for a long time if they ever want to make a second DVD. Right. Because they but, they ain't trying to pull a cod out here making microtransaction in every yearly game. You know, they're they're trying to keep this game alive, keep updating it, keep it healthy. You know, try to make both sides somewhat happy, regardless of. Uh, prevalent issues because they want they want their community to be happy i don't think they want people to be you know pissed off and angry i think they want to try and make changes that make the game more enjoyable not for one side or the other but for both sides as a whole i just don't think they always do the best option which is fine i guess they're trying you know all, i guess i guess dvd's trying that's what i'm trying to say they're trying they might not always do the best thing but at least they're trying cool all righty uh, all right, we yeah. have one, one more, more email. That's this one's gonna take us a while because it's everything. <laughs> it's Smith's concept for a new chapter. He has a killer with perks and add-ons, and well, are these add-ons? Yes, these are add-ons. He's got a killer uh, with a big ass fucking power that we have to read through. Um, these he has three perks. Uh, three add-ons, and then also a survivor with three perks as well. So, Yikes. yeah, this is going to take us a hot minute. But I put the, you guys should all have the image. I'll pull up the image on screen and stuff, too. Um, I can read the uh, killer stuff, if you want. Sure. Okay. Uh, was there, like, a preface to the chapter? Or? Uh, no. I think the, it's Fallout-themed. So yeah, I don't really I know though. Supposed to be a death claw. Yeah, I think we'll find out as we go because the email literally okay. just had the link and that was it. All right. Um, so I'm I'm guessing this this killer's name is Radio Silence. Is that the or is that the no? That's the that's the name of the DLC. Okay, I don't I don't know what the the it's the beast. Name of killer the beast. Is. The beast is what it okay, says. The, I the beast. See. Okay. The beast. Sorry, I didn't have access to the email. I just have access to the image. All right, here we go. So the beast. So the, the beast's power is called the beast's rage. The unbridled rage of the beast fuels its hunt. When the beast strikes or hooks a survivor, it gains one token of rage. When the beast is outside its territory, the beast may spend one token to create a nest. The nest will mark the area around it with a 20 meter radius as part of the beast's territory. The nest will generate a token of rage every 20 seconds Nests cannot be placed within 20 meters of each other, but there's no limit on the number of nests that can be in the trial at once. The beast is inside its territory. The beast may spend rage tokens to inflict status effects on survivors inside its territory. One token is survivors' auras are revealed to you for five seconds. Three tokens is inflict the exhaust status on survivors for 30 seconds. Five tokens is inflict the hindered status on survivors for 30 seconds, and seven tokens is inflict the exposed status on survivors for 30 seconds. Survivors within the beast territory are unable to hear the terror radius or see the red light. Survivors hear the beast snarls while within the beast terror radius. Status effect duration is increased by 50% while in the beast terror or er, territory. Um, survivors are able to dismantle the beast's nests. Uh, uh, what the chat. hell am I reading and listening to? I am, <laughs> my mind is just so blown right now. Okay, so so to, to chop it down to you. size, there are there are nests, basically 20, 20 meter radius traps that the not traps, but same same concept that the beast will lay down, thus growing its territory on the map. So and it gains like bonuses what's in the territory. Right, right. So. Okay. The thing that I don't get is he says that like you like that like the beast gains stacks of rage whenever he hits and hooks people. Yes. But then he also says that like the nests generate stacks of rage themselves. Are those separated from the ones that you carry on yourself? No, I think I think yeah. what he means, or I think the way you're supposed to be playing this killer is you start your game with no nests and you know no tokens, so you can't build a nest. But once you catch your first survivor you can start building up your nests, and those nests will end up being the Making thing that you gives powerful? you your rage tokens. Yeah. yeah. 
Because they generate you rage tokens while you're inside yeah. it every 20 so, seconds. I think or... just in general, they just oh, give you rage oh, tokens. Oh. So it's just and like a constant feeding in supply. To spend your rage tokens. So, so if you like have 10 nests over the course of the game, like if you have 10 nests on the map, you will get like 10 rage tokens every interval. Yeah, so however, however long it takes, which he's he doesn't supposed to be a really say, scaling but... killer from the sounds of it. Yes, yeah. yeah, like a very snowball but, killer. I, but like the survivors can also find them, so I guess it depends on how easy the nests are to hide or whatever. You know, like how visible they are, because you could also break the nest and survivor. And you also have to yeah. be like in the area of the nest to get. The yeah. What what bonuses. what what I'm wondering is how exactly does the spending work? Is it just based on how many tokens you have? Like, say if you had like five tokens, but you wanted to oh. use the one token thing, could you do that? Or would it just take all five? Yeah, I don't know. Because that's the thing. It's almost like a point machine. Like, you spend it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel like... That's going to confuse I feel like the only way it could work with how Dead by Daylight works anyway. Like, obviously, if DVD was a game that used more than five buttons. <clears throat> but, you know, since it's, <laughs> since it's not in its DVD, I feel like the only way it would work is that however many tokens you had, it would just do the most. So, say if you went, if you went at right. it with, like, 15 tokens, it would do the last one where it exposed them. If you went at it with, like, six tokens, it would do the five-token one, you know? I feel like that's how it would right. have like, to work. Like, Devour, Devour Hope. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Which is... Um, so, I mean, honestly, honestly, it sounds like a terrifying killer. Like, you you being able to, to mark your territory and stuff and and potential lethality like after a very very short amount of time may, may i add you know after after what like maybe two minutes you could potentially become lethal if you were just setting a bunch of territory on one side of the map like it's just like it, it it sounds it sounds very scary um in terms of potentially being lethal like like let me let me pose an example right um if you were to set a bunch of nests on one half of the map and you know the survivors are just like, okay, it's a it's a beast. Let's chug away on the gens on this side of the map, so they have like two or three gens done because you're setting your territory. Um, and then they finally come into your territory, and you start insta downing people and start hooking them in your territory. And this just sounds like a huge snowball. And it's just like, and if you weren't able to catch them, then I just throw no ed on and blah 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 blah. Yeah, the um, exposed one seems rough. Right. Right. Um, yeah, if, if... I, 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 I feel like you could also like take this and also consider like you know if things like that are a problem like hypothetically they could always make it so that tokens generated slower or whatever right like oh, yeah no or, 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 yeah. or change the amount of tokens needed because like do you want to spend five tokens on a 30 second hindered or seven on a 30 second no ed you know I don't know about you guys but I'd rather wait a one nest worth 40 seconds time for a no end on every survivor, you know, for 30 seconds. Like, explodes well, on everyone I think versus that's, them healing slower. I think that's, that's the, only on everyone in I think Hindered is the slow, not the uh, slower heal. Oh, it's Hindered? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's slow. Yeah, because down, the yeah. Oh, right. like the extra Hindered. Yeah, that's right. an extra what's, Hindered bottle. Fit. What's the Hindered movement speed? Is it is it the Hag 7% or is it the, what's it called? The, the clowns like 15% or 10% or whatever it is. 15%, uh, yeah, it's 15%. Yeah. So uh, the the one thing I, I can't I can't tell if I like am scared of this killer in like terms of balance or if I like really, really like this idea. The the thing is is uh, this stuff, right? The token spending for your rage is only applicable when they're in your territory. So if they go into your your nested area, um, that's when you can use your traps. And as a survivor, it sounds like to me, if I know where your territory is, I simply need to run out of it. But that doesn't get you out of the shitty situation because I'm still a killer. I can still hit you, right? Uh, I, I just can't insta down you. I'm still. No, a, I'm no, the down. Threat. You have to also go into the territory to get rid right. of the. Uh... The things. Yeah, true, and true. on top of that, survivors might not even know that they're in the territory. You know, right. like, are they actually going to get like an indication that that's even where? Like, they might not even know. You know, there's no heartbeat hidden. and no red light when you're in the terror. It's a, so if if they hear a heartbeat and they walk in somewhere and it insta disappears, that would be a good idea. Wait, really? Where terror. does it say that? Uh, right under the uh, seven tokens. Survivors within the beast terror radius are unable to hear the terror radius or territory. Sorry, they territory. Hear the snarling of the, the of the beast too. 
That's what it says. I think that should be removed, to be honest. Because yeah, that... but another thing is no. while the survivors are oh, like, Brett, you just said that while the survivors are out of the territory, they aren't affected, but they are. It's just while they're in the territory, everything is fifty percent longer. So the the duration is fifty percent longer on the effect while you're in the territory versus oh. while you're not. Yeah, so, so it says the beast territory oh. status effects duration is increased by fifty percent while within the beast territory. So so that's fine, but but there's there's a point that says when the beast is inside the territory, the beast may spend rage tokens. Yeah, but to you, so you just have to be in the territory to initially start it. Oh, oh. Do you understand oh I see what, what you mean. I mean. No, 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 yeah. you're right. It says on survivors inside the territory. So wait, then what's the point of the second part? That says that the effects are no, I, duration. I, 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 they I, be? no, I, I think you just figured it out because it, I think it's exactly what you said. I, I think, I think you can, you, you can initiate the status while they're in the area, and then I think if they stay in the area, it probably just goes down like fifty percent slower, and if they yeah, leave yeah, the area, yeah. it actually goes down like the full like thirty seconds. So yeah, really, okay, so, thought. so really, if you can keep them in the area, it would be forty-five seconds instead of thirty, right? So, yeah. So this is this is. This is why I'll go with the negatives first, then I'll go with the positives. Actually, no, I'll do it the other way. Positives first. Positive. I, I like the idea of a, a scary killer, right? I like the idea of a surprise. I like the idea of like, ooh, spoopy. Like this guy could get hit me down instantly if, if I if I'm in his terror radius or his uh, territory. I don't know if I'm in there. I'd but, like the idea of scary killers too, my friend. Right. The the bad thing though is is i see oh so many ways to exploit this killer thrill of the hunt Free Free totem. yeah just yeah. anything no, Free anything, I even anything, really thought of three gen too i think anything that regards holding a part of the map and just like camping a part of the map like what like if i have a survivor hooked and i put a nest down next to them i'm not leaving why would i yeah right? it just i can yeah i can gain tokens I can gain tokens 20 per second underneath this guy's hook and wait for a person to come and just insta down the person that comes to save before they can come get him. It it sounds it, like there needs to be a, a, a definite rework. I don't know like like how how long it takes to set these nests. I don't know how long it takes to dismantle them. But if a person's trying to dismantle a nest, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of like, hey, there's a person dismantling my nest. Boom, insta down. You know what I mean? Like free hit, free down, free hook, free win. Um, the the power seems very very strong in terms of like a killer that would want to camp a certain area. That's that's my gist on this. This killer's power is it's very very uh, stagnant. Stay in one place. Make sure that you don't leave. Protect what you have. Just yeah. camp the nests and get out. Or, yeah. or and by get out, I mean kill everyone. Yeah, like, sure. it, it could be fun, but I agree. I feel like it would probably end up getting fucking abused. Do, do, do you guys want to go on to, to his perks and his add-ons and yeah, stuff? Yeah, sure. I was yeah. actually yeah, just about to say that, that too. All right. um, do we even want to, yeah. like, just just uh, about the add-ons? Should we even, like, talk about the add-ons? Like, are there, like, any major gameplay-changing add-ons? Because I don't think we need to discuss the add-ons that are, like... If there are add-ons like, oh, you set the nest ten percent faster. How about how about I mean, I'll just no. I'll just read the add-ons. We don't really need to talk about them that much because yeah, it just, seems yeah. like they're self-explanatory. So yeah, the, yeah. the first one is called the the prized eggshell. An eggshell stolen from uh, its protective mother moderately reduces the range of nests, moderately increases the setting time of nests, increase the costs of setting nests by one. So it takes rage to set a nest. Yeah, okay. it's, it's the yeah, very it last it. one okay. that makes gotcha. it cool. Yep. Um, upon cleansing a nest, survivors are exposed for 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, 50 milligram round casing. The casing's from an experienced hunter that nearly brought the beast down. Tremendously increases the time to cleanse nests. Considerably reduces the time for nests to generate tokens of rage. Um, 357 magnum round casing. The casings from a greedy prospector, later torn apart by the beast claws, moderately increases the time to cleanse nests, moderately reduces the time for nests to generate tokens of rage. Um, and then uh, 10 round casings. The casings from a lost researcher that remains never found slightly increases the time for nests to generate tokens of rage. I'm guessing you meant to put reduces on that. Reduces, that yeah. That, that yeah. add-on doesn't help at all. So, okay. 
Cool. So those are the add-ons. Let's go to the, the first teachable. Um, yeah, sure. Let's go. So this teachable perk is called Primal Sense. Instinct is what drives you to push on. When a generator is 20% away from being completed, its aura will turn white. This persists until the generator is completed, or if the progress of the generator regresses under the stated level. OK. I mean, let's just read the other ones. But that's OK. It's not just well, the Tinkerer rework. Yeah, that is yes. kind of the Tinkerer rework, isn't it? It's the Tinkerer rework, but like it, it stays, right? Because Tinkerer will will go away, right? It'll it'll give you the notification and it'll be like, OK, they're almost 20% done, or 90% done, right? And then this is 20%, but it stays until it's out of that 20% threshold. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting idea. I mean, we're going to kind of see that almost whenever Tinker comes. So Very close, right? Curious. Right. Um, second teachable is Hellfire Plague. A new plague haunts this world. Failed healing skill checks cause the survivor being healed to become afflicted with one of the following. Hemorrhage, mangled, blindness, exhausted, hindered. Ooh. I gotta say, I don't, I don't, I really don't like that RNG right there. Yep. That yeah. is some heavy yeah. RNG getting fucked. Yeah, Wait, I, did, uh, did it, did it, did it list exposed? No, no. exposed isn't there. Okay, because but I was gonna say, oh, you've you got have, the skill check, have fun getting, no one. You have like, exhausted and like hindered and mangled with blindness and hemorrhage, you know, like he hemorrhage. Like right. he he they're gonna bleed or you know, they're exhausted for 90 seconds. I think then... I think blindness is pretty strong. I think hemorrhage is the only one that's probably not. I don't think thing. blindness is that strong because it only, doesn't it only affect, does it affect anything, Face? Is that how blindness No, yeah, yeah, it affects like if someone's Ooh. on a hook, you don't see them. If someone's right, slow, right. you don't see them. Down, yeah. It's slightly better than it was before because blindness yeah. before was unless they bring in a perk, it's completely useless. Yeah, no, so, it's yeah. actually pretty okay now. It's, okay, it's pretty that's good. good, that's good. Okay, I, I, I hemorrhage honestly... really bad. I honestly don't mind the RNG if I if I'm gonna say so. I don't really mind it just being a random affliction. I don't mind the RNG if hemorrhage was removed. I just don't like the fact that you have a big swing. Think of like, I don't like in games where you have a random effect that changes the entire game potentially because of how powerful it is. I mean, I personally don't think this would do shit. How many times do you yeah. fail? No, 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 the, the second thing effect goes. versus weaker effects. You know, the second thing like a, is, this is not going to be good. I mean, if you pair with overcharge, it's probably amazing. But no, it's healing skill checks. No, healing skill checks. Oh, it's only healing skill checks. Okay. I mean, this yeah. this could this teachable, but it, imagine this, guys. Imagine this, and I think this is where Smith is going with this. You you cheeky bastard, you. If you if you were to put this teachable on Freddy, in his current uh -oh. sense. Right? Oh. Uh oh. Right. <laughs> this is sly old fox. Yeah. So. So this, cheeky little bastard. This teachable perk is not not necessarily the That's the worst. The Freddy based, yeah, if, if That's the, the Freddy killer, If the killer that you're using it on isn't that bad, like uh, yeah, that's fair. I just think that honestly, I'd rather see hemorrhage and um um like as an effect with something else, like you know how sloppy butcher is hemorrhage and twenty five percent healing mangled instead of fifty percent sure. mangled. I'd sure. rather see something like that because I think that would be good then because it, it's like you get the blood, especially on a healing skill check. You have them bleeding and then they also heal slightly slower. Mm -hmm. So maybe it gives you time to go find them. I don't know. I just don't, I don't okay. like hemorrhage being in there because I think hemorrhage is really useless by itself. Okay. I cool. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to the, the third teachable perk. This is a hex perk called Hex Prey on the Weak. Prey exists to be hunted down and slaughtered. When a survivor heals another survivor from injured or down state, gain a token. So one token is status effect duration increased by 5% for every token gain. Um, I'm guessing these are the status effects being built up on the survivors, like mangled and hindered yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, three tokens is all survivors completing actions face a tremendously difficult skill check this occurs every time a new token is gained okay and five tokens all skill checks are now tremendously difficult all totems are reconstructed one dull totem is lit and is now associated with prey on the weak oh so wait the, the there's not even a, there's not even a totem associated with this until you get five perks 
No, no, no. He's there. Is he's saying to? So I think what this means is that by all totems being reconstructed, let's say you have four dull totems broken and this one being the last one out, right? Then you make it so you reconstruct all of those broken totems and put this on a random totem. So right. it could be one of the already broken totems. Huh. So 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 basically, let's say you you cleansed four out of the five totems and there's only the hex one lit. You hit five tokens, all of those come back to life, and one of those dull totems now becomes lit, so there's two lit totems that can now be cleansed to get rid of this prey on the weak. See, that's, so what, that's kind of what I was wondering. Would you then have to right. break both, or would you only have to oh, break one? I I would assume you break one, and it yeah. makes one. I don't think they there would be two. I assume it's just to random it in case if, for example, people knew where it was. Right. That, that's my guess, at least. That's that's like when I read that, that's what I think it would make the most sense to me. I mean, okay, it, it, back to like what this actually does, though. Like, it, that's I feel like that could that could be a bunch of different ways how it works. But back to like what this actually does, it basically just makes skill checks crazy, right? Like, yes. the, the the three token one's interesting. So like, when you get a token, everyone faces a super tremendous like a tremendously difficult skill check. So like that's right after someone heals somebody else if the other two are like doing a gen or something they'll get a super hard skill check but like if they're not like say if everyone's around the hook while they're healing then i guess just nothing happens because it happens after the heal is done is yeah, like when you get it i'd say another important thing is that tokens are never capped at what they say so even though this is a five token thing you could get tens of tokens like so many tokens because right. it just tens of them dude Tens, like, hey, tens of them on the side. <laughs> that's important, my dude. No, it is. It is. You're right. Yeah, that's that's like, pretty big. Could you imagine having twenty tokens, twenty five percent, you know, increases? Isn't that a now? Now, hear me out. You know, sometimes people call me the math man. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know why I someone would ever call you that. That's weird. I don't know why they call you that. That would be double the effect of the status duration, which would be pretty good, and it's it's a pretty easy way to get tokens, like. Yeah, like you can definitely oh, yeah, like. Oh yeah, DPD is a thing. Yeah, just by like being a slugging killer, you can get a fuck ton of tokens just by slugging people and letting them pick each other up and shit. You Slug know? metal. Yeah, it'd be pretty disgusting. It's, it seems interesting, especially considering it has, uh, what's the words? Uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, synergy with 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 the previous one, the Hellfire Plague. You know, so like. Oh, honestly, Did you I mentioned this with Huntress Lullaby. Now that I think about it, I see even more synergy. How I was just talking about how the three token one is is almost useless if if everyone's healing each other. I just realized if you if you're healing someone from the down state to the injured state, then you're gonna get that skill check whenever they go to the injured state. So then you'll you'll get a super hard healing skill check that if you fail, you could get affected by Hellfire Plague, which is kind of neat. I, I kinda, right. I'm kind of seeing the synergy now. Like the whole thing is just based around making skill checks hard as shit. So I, so, I I think this is cool. I think it's a really really neat idea. And I enjoy the, the innovation of it. The the one thing that you know I'll do the devil's advocate again is, um, oppression. Right? Is it is it fun? Is it fun to play against? Is it, are are people going to be engaged by trying to hit the tremendously difficult skill checks? Or are they going to be like, oh, another prey on the weak gamer? You know what I mean? Like fuck me. This guy's running ruin and prey on the weak and hellfire play. It's just like, please, please get these players out of my game, please. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. I don't know. That's that's how I would view it at that point. I don't know. Like, may maybe, I. Uh, there's there's a there's a fine line between like, what's good in this game and what is oppressive, and what is fun. Right, because it's different for everybody. But I feel like if you're a team of survivors and you have like, like let's talk, let's talk matchmaking. You know, like you have three rank ones and the one rank twenty can't hit a goddamn skill check, and then all these prey on the weak start like, like it's literally what the the perk is supposed to do is play on noobs that can't hit skill checks. But like, at at that point, is it good at rank one? Because you're not going to really be missing a lot of those. Yeah. That's fair. I like, just as a random side note, I think the thing I like the most about it is honestly the status effect duration, because I think that's really cool. 
I don't like the skill checks idea of it, but I like I, I like perk that is like a, a scaling up based on, you know, I'd say this perk doesn't really promote you to tunnel because you want to hit multiple people and down them and then to get healed. So that means for you to gain tokens, you need to not tunnel or else you won't gain tokens, right? Right. And I, I kind of like that idea of it. I don't like either of the skill check parts of it. I agree with you. I don't think it's fun for new players. And I think that's a big thing. Is like this perk is I, I don't think it's going to be good at rank one, except for maybe the odd person who's uh, streaming and reading chat and misses the skill check that rank one. Um, sure. Uh, what? Um, <clears throat> Who would ever do but, that? But yeah, no, I, I don't yeah. think it'd be a good perk. But I, I really do like the one token idea. How every token you gain status effects, and I'd right. rather see something that's based around status effects than around shitting on new players. Right. I'm, I'm then, gonna... then you create a new unique build that I, it might be interesting, you know, like, except for like exhaustion. Right. I, so, Sorry. so this, I, I completely agree with you. I, I want to see, I want to see more, more perks that go into the mindset of not tunneling, not slugging, not camping. Yeah. I want, I want them to, to push me to actively engage multiple members of the survivor team so yeah. a, a, an idea like this right really short sweet simple idea um when when you get a hook just like barbecue and chili you get a, a token of some kind that gives you a buff of some kind right i'm not going to list what it is or what whatever but the way you gain more more points and tokens is hooking different people so not not only hooking different people like people you haven't hooked before but hooking people that weren't the last person to just be hooked. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like the, if, if you're thinking about tunneling someone, you can, you lose a token or something for, for hooking the same person. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, but, I agree. I, I like that idea of, of perks that promote a better place. Cause what's the, what's the point of not tunneling really? There, I don't, there is I don't even think that should be a perk. I think that could be even a baseline. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's just a, an idea because when we're going into these these uh, these innovative perk discussions, I want I want the people who are thinking about making these cool, crazy killers, I want them to be thinking like, what is fun, right? What is fun? Uh, because as the killer, you're going to be going after a bunch of survivors, but you, you, you should, in my opinion, also think about the people that you're playing with, right? Um, it, it, at least in my in my perspective, I, I like making sure that the people that I'm playing with, even though they might lose, are still having a good time, right? Well, yeah, because you want a game to be fun. It doesn't have to be miserable when you lose. Right. Agreed. Cool. You want to hit it? We, 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 we have the other image of the survivor perks as well. If you want to hit those up. Oh yeah, we do. Uh, I don't. I don't have that. I would. Love I don't that. have access cool. to it. So. Wait, really? Uh, wait. I, I got you. I no, got I, you. it's it's oh, already wait, linked in the group chat. It should have. What? Been, it was an album. That, what? There's no survival perks, is there? Just tofu, killing. tofu. There oh, is two you images. Like two pages? Yeah, there's oh. two images. We what? It's an album. Oh, Holy there's shit. two images. Jibated. I only saw one image. Jibated. I was about to shit on tofu. Holy shit! I'm so sorry. Oh my god, you guys! Oh, so Little tofu. faith god. in you, dude. Yeah, my god. Tofu, dude. Not even putting two images in. What a nerdo. Albums, brother. Albums. Omega oh, little. Wait, is this an album? Is that actually why? Is is yeah. that why you're debating this? Yeah, it's a no. It's an imager album. Anyway, yeah, anyway, anyway, let's let's go ahead and get into this, okay? It's Sharon Cassidy. Sharon Cassidy. She's a tough fighter, able to protect others in the most dire situations. Her personal her personal perks, survival is down the hatch and shotgun welding, encourage putting herself in the line of fire to save others. Okay, shotgun wedding, sorry. Okay, the first perk is survivalist. Experience from the wasters from the ways, you know, someone else read it. I give up. I already, I already fucking give up. Someone else read it. Do you it. want me to read them? You, you fucking read it. I can't read today, dude. I don't know what's wrong with me. You read. All right. Survivalist. Experience from the wastes has taught you some tricks. Disarming traps, dismantling totems, and sabotaging hooks grants your token up to a maximum of three. For each token, gr okay, this literally says grain. For each token, grain a 10% bonus to action speed. Upon completing an action not listed above, a token is spent. 
Uh, okay, next perk. Down the hatch. Boost makes you a bit more reckless, but it also dulls the pain. Gain 100% more points for protection distraction actions. While protecting another survivor, taking a hit by a killer carrying a survivor, hits that would down you and set trigger a 20 second bleed out timer. Shotgun wedding. If you're getting hitched, might as well make it quick. You perform rescue actions 100% faster. Damn, I oh. love graining. 10% bonus to action Graining, speed. dude, yeah. I'm kind of looking at these, like, the first perk is interesting. 10% per thing is pretty nutty. Like, that's like 30% faster. I mean, I know you lose tokens whenever you do things or whatever, but like, that's a lot of speed, but dude, dude. imagine this. Imagine this, you take Survivalist, right? You take Survivalist, you take Sabo, you like, you, 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 this, um, you cleanse the first three dull totems you find, you like, this Sabo the first hooks you find, and you get on a gen, you get that generator done 30% faster. Holy shit. You could pump out gens by yourself if you bring, like, a toolbox. I think or all tokens should so be quickly. consumed, personally. Yeah, same. Yeah, I, uh, but I, I agree. You I could pump out a gen by yourself so quickly. Well, thir like... Positive modifiers are so much worse than negative, though. That's that's one thing. Yeah. The second thing is, like, it's going to take you a lot of wasted time to do those actions. So I suppose the idea is to give you that time back. So I think I think that doing three, like, dismantling three totems and having a 30% action speed, like, you're going to do gens 30% faster. That's what I'm reading, right? Yeah. Well, bonus well it's, you're, that's you're, not you're, how that works, because if you have a 100% action speed, you complete a gen twice the speed. So you don't complete a gen 30% faster, because if you complete a gen... Wait. No, you do complete a gen 30% faster. Yeah, right? it, it's going to be I, very, honestly, very fast. My, my point is, is I don't think, personally, I don't think that... I think if they chalked it down maybe to like 5%, it might be a little better. Because like, like people already complain about just like the game. Like I'll 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 even say it. The games go by wicked fast. Like if survivors know what they're doing, they're just gone. Even with hex ruin, right? So you're telling me that if you cleanse hex ruin and any other thing that I'm trying to mitigate, you also get a buff now to to make the time back that you lost. Like it's like it, at at that margin, like thirty percent is very very high to me. Well, yeah. 30% is 19 seconds off of it. 18.5 seconds, I believe. That's still so much, dude. It's I gotta agree with Apples here. The games go so fast as is. I think any person oh, yeah, that, it, like... It takes off, off 18.5 seconds. So, but yeah, you're cleansing Hex Rune, and then you also have to cleanse two more things, which is a 14-second action per. So you spend a total of 40-plus seconds to get 18.5 se seconds back. Yeah, like, I, I get that, like, numbers-wise, it's, it's not really worth, but I feel like as a killer, you're almost relying on that shit just to make your games last long enough to be able to do well, you know? Like, you're that's relying fair. on people that's, doing that's totems and shit. That's is needed. So, unquote. yeah, so, so like, the, like, so, you know, you're already hoping that people are doing that kind of shit, and now if they do do it, it the generator just gets done even faster. Like, I, I feel like, I just, I don't know. I can't really get behind anything that, like, makes gens faster in the current state mm -hmm. of the game. I just can't get behind it. There's I think no if way. it excluded just repairing, this would still be a good perk. I yeah. think this perk is really bad in the current meta, is what I'll say about it. I don't yeah. think bad it's bad. Bad as in, it really shouldn't be in the game, not bad as in it would be a bad perk to use. Uh, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I mean by bad. I don't, I don't know if it'd be a terrible perk in the game. It wouldn't be uh, very nice, because rushing be, gens is bad. It'd be an amazing perk. I'd run, I'd run Survivalist on every survivor. Like, if I was playing Tryhard, right? Rank I 1 think, Tryhard. I, I would the cleanse. problem is that it counts dis dismantling totems. I think that's the biggest problem with it. If really? It I, thought maybe, I thought maybe disarming traps, dude. Imagine oh, just disarming wait, a couple disarming traps. disarming traps? Yeah, that's like does two it seconds. Mean disarming, or does it mean sabotaging? Because it says disarming. disarming. That's dumb. If it's yeah. disarming traps, it should not be disarming traps. I think that means sabotage traps. I hope I so, because yeah, because so yeah, because like disarm takes really. Means, but... Yeah, I don't think it is either. Are you sure? Why I... would disarming a trap give you such an increase? That makes no sense. From a time like you're doing something that's positive, and then you gain something more positive for it. Because that's this is a, a theoretical. Like, 
I mean, I mean, you you gain Lightbringer for dismantling a hex totem, so that's this doing a good it's, thing. It's sabotaging traps. You just typed it. Right. Well, that's not what it says here. I know, and that's what I'm saying. Cause I know, I know, I know. If, if that's what it is, it's stupid as fuck. <laughs> not disarm a trap and do a gen eight seconds faster for doing something positive. That is okay. fucking stupid. So, so for survivalists, for this teachable perk, it it needs a little bit of uh, watering down, right? This is a little a little too much. A little busted. Yeah. I, I agree. I think I think if you're gonna have perks that make you do gens faster, the numbers need to be like similar to like leader or prove yeah, yourself, yeah, where it's right. or like resilience, and it needs, where like, a prerequisite, you know? Yeah, where it's like right. just barely like good enough to notice a difference, but it's barely anything, you know? Right. Okay, um, the the down the hatch perk, honestly, um, I like it. It sounds cool. yeah, I like it. It sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, the the only thing that worries me about it is the twenty second bleed out. So the the concept with down the hatch, right, is you can now take three hits, right? If you take three hits, and this is only with one survivor, if you take three hits on a hook, the 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 person will wiggle. Right, almost almost guaranteed. Right. Could you imagine having this with a borrowed time state as well? Like say, yeah. like, 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 say, if you got unhooked with borrowed time and maybe adrenaline, just to be hypothetical, like you, you like that happened right in front of a killer that was walking to a hook. You can tank. You can tank four hits before you go down. Well, yeah. That's if anyone, crazy. well, this is this is borrowed time on steroids, right? Because because this will allow you to, um like maybe even say the survivor like if like forget if the, you're hooking someone next to an exit gate right forget it like they're gone because they're either going to wiggle by taking three hits and then the person who has down the hatch is also going to make it out because they have a 20 second bleed out timer or um they hook them and now the person that had down the hatch also gets the gets the uh the borrowed time save and then they're out anyways I mean, you might be able to get the down the hatch person, but still, it it does sound kind of like crazy in terms of altruism. I really enjoy the additional 100% more blood points for the hits. I don't know about the invulnerability. That one scares me. Yeah, like 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 triggering the bleed out timer is a little, especially considering like me personally. I'm I'm even the type of person that doesn't really care about body blocking survivors. Like I'm totally cool with it. But there's a lot, like a large section of the community hates that shit. Like fucking despises when survivors like body blocked, you know, and people wiggle out. And this would trigger the fuck out of them. That's all I'm saying, dude. This would cause so many people to like fucking flip out and be triggered. I, I, I don't know. I, I personally think even with like my point of view towards body blocking, I think the, the, the uh, 20 second bleed out thing is a little too much. Yeah. If, if this was replaced with something akin to uh, Unbreakable, like if, if, you, uh, if you were hit down, but you gained a, the, the status effect of Unbreakable to pick yourself up or something, I mean, that would, that would make Unbreakable fucking worthless, I guess. But this Unbreakable could be used at any time while you're down. This would have to be used when you get the third hit to be downed for your, your down the hatch to activate. Um, that might be a little better because it's not really in vulnerability. The killer can still counterplay your play by losing the survivor on their shoulder, but picking you up instead, right? Like you just you just got three hits, right? Three hits to save the person. And then if they choose to go after the person that just wiggled off their shoulder, then you can pick yourself up and counterplay the killer choosing not to pick you up instead. Does that make sense? I like that one more instead of being able to run away and self care. I just don't like an extra health state personally. Yeah. Like I... uh, health states are so oh health states are like really important. And even if it runs out, that's still that extra time that you're wasting, right? So, so I don't this, know. This wouldn't give you an extra health state with with the with the change I'm proposing, right? Down the hatch. You get the hit, first hit, you go to your, your injured state. Second hit, you're downed, but now you gain the unbreakable status effect that you are able to pick yourself up now, right? Okay. 
and, and this would be an unlimited time use. We'll see. Right. Right. The thing is that still technically could be a health state, but they do have to slug, which actually I, I get that scenario because then it, it should actually proc because that's the activated scenario that you're looking for is that there's going to be multiple people because you got to protect it. So. Right. Like there's multiple times where, where you take a hit, another survivor takes a hit, and then you're basically standing there injured and you go, look, we could take another hit, but someone's going to be on the ground, right? if we do this and the person will wiggle, but you have to be altruistic enough to basically give your life to the killer for your teammate. With this, this counter plays a tunneling killer who refuses to pick up the person being altruistic and instead chase the person that was on their shoulder to begin with, right? That's fair, I get, I get what you mean. That's, it's, a one one, it's a one for one trade on gaining 100% more blood points, but not, not with this 20 second bleed out timer. This one, this one is everybody gets away Big counterplay. You know what I mean? Yep. In my opinion. It was a big discussion about that one perk, to be honest. Well, it's because... Down that, that, not saying uh, it's a bad thing, but still. Yeah, no, it's because, like, it's the bleed out thing, is so strong. Like, you don't want that borrowed time effect on a lot of things or anything. Oh, Smith, Smith said something that's actually a, a really good balance to this. It, this perk wouldn't be active while the exit gates are powered. Yeah, that's an that interesting would be, one. Yeah, that would be kind of insane what the exit gates were powered. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I mean, in, in its current state, not like Apple's like theory, like in the its right. current state would be fucking ridiculous with the exit right. gates powered. Like tr trying to take one guy to a hook, you'd have like legit like six people. You'd have to you'd have to hit people six times to, before you could hook them with nobody even going down. That'd be fucking right. crazy. All right, Ooh. so this last part last is perk. probably the opposite. It's very short and sweet. Just rescue actions are 100% faster. Kind of useless. I wouldn't say useless. Um, I mean, I don't know if it would be like a top tier perk. This? Yeah, I mean. I mean, I think this is a perfect perk for what you said, like, I think last episode, Tofu. Because I, I agree with you 100% where I think perks in this game should be short and sweet, very minor. Yeah, like I think like, this is like the size of strike, sprint burst, no ed shouldn't really be a thing. It should really just be, you know, perks like this one, like uh, what was it called again? Shot one winning. I think that should be uh, what the perks should be in the game. So, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think really it should be the perk, like in the I game. It should be As like the game the is now, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, like right right now, I don't think anyone would would run that, you know, just because there's so many other but, better perks. But yeah, it would be cool if that was like the standard for perks, you know. Like I, I think it could definitely be slightly useful. Don't get me wrong; it's not like it's awful, but it's just not it, it's not good enough to run over the meta shit, you know. It's basically all. Are it we is. talking shotgun wedding right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, the, the the idea is cool. It's just you know, it's one of those perks where I again, I think it's. Honestly, if we're talking balance here, I think I think this is actually like one of the the best perks in terms of balance. Pretty a, a pretty niche perk that like honestly can pair well with other perks. Like if we're talking like borrowed time, you can do quick saves. We'll make it. Yeah. Yeah, things like that. Like if you're trying to bait an unhook, things like that, you can unhook them real quick. Um, it, it you know it's it's a synergistic perk, which I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, I Need agree. More synergistic perks. I think the strength from the perks and that by they let should come from the synergies, not from one yeah. perk just being like amazing. I totally agree. That would that that, that would be so <laughs> no, cool. I, if, I, it's I, a, I would love that. that and I, I constantly say that I love synergies because it feels good. You know, when you have a cool combo, you make like even no matter how shitty it is, you still feel good. You know, when I run bond. Uh, object of obsession and whatever open-handed you know i ain't doing it because it's god tier i'm doing it because it feels fucking good and you know it's i fun, love it yeah it's fun I, if i get a whole squad doing it we're we're shit we got the worst perks in the game except bond but you know like we're looking at the killer you know we're teabagging and and we're dying because we don't have sperm <laughs> burst decisive strike Maryland and then self-care but that's okay because we're having fun out here and that's what matters is the game is fun yeah. Fun. Cool. F stands. No, well, uh, <laughs> thanks, yeah. Smith, for sending in these ideas. Hell Appreciate yeah. it. Hell yeah, dude.
some good ideas, Mr. S Smith. Yeah, man, nice hypothetical. Miss Smith. <laughs> got him. Ah, got him. <laughs> I think that's uh, I think that's it though. I mean, we don't have any other emails right now, and uh, we're making good time right now. It's a good hour and a half. I think uh, I think that's pretty good, man. This is a good podcast. Yeah. We got definitely. any closing closing things? Anything anybody wants to touch on? Uh, obviously, if you guys have ideas, whether you think they're good, whether you think they're bad, whether you're embarrassed about them, whatever they are, please send them in. They're fun to talk about. Hell yeah, we, dude! Man, we will not if you're if you're embarrassed, I just want to say, if you're embarrassed about an idea you have, and that's why you didn't post it, like the very first own killer that I ever, quote unquote, made, like thought of, was a fucking 1800s policeman who shot people with a flintlock pistol. And that was the idea. Wow. So, if you, you're embarrassed, it doesn't get any more embarrassing than that. That's a pretty <laughs> shit concept. He literally just shot people, and I thought it was balanced because he had a cooldown on it. Nice. Nice. Guys. So don't be discouraged. Send us your emails. Daylightcastpodcast yes. at gmail.com. Send that shit in. We'll read it. We'll do entire uh, podcasts dedicated to emails like this as they come in. Like once we get enough that we feel like we have enough for a podcast, we'll do one. And until Hell then. Yeah. So like hypothetically, if you send an email and then no one else sends an email for like a while, it might take us a minute to do the podcast where we read yours. So just stay patient. But we will read it 100% if you send it in. Yeah. Just and uh, yeah, that's that's it. If we want to say our goodbyes, uh, I mean, I I am Otofu. I stream at twitch.tv slash Otofu. I'm a giant nerd. Mathman two hundred, I think, is actually streaming right now, which means nothing to anybody who's like watching this on YouTube <laughs> no, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he is he is a streamer as well. Who I think is I correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're trying to go like back to like full time, like not full time. Oh but yeah, like, oh yeah, I am, I am. Yeah. yeah, like you're you're going hard on DVD now. Mathman is probably one of the best survivors hard, yeah. in the game, dude. You guys should check him out, Mathman. I'm 200. watching him run around this Freddy for like five minutes at yeah. this point, and it's I feel so bad for this Freddy because he has no chance. <laughs> Feels yeah. good, man, for Mathman. Yeah, he, he's he's Hell kind yeah. of a god. You guys you guys should check him. Out. I'll, there'll be links for all this under the stream, by the way, too. Also, Reex Apples is it was. It was an amazing streamer, a good killer, all around awesome dude, uh, who's also been streaming quite a bit. So go feel free to check him out as well. I'll have links for all that. And then we have Atro, who doesn't really do, you do you don't like stream or like you have a YouTube channel. Do you want me to link your YouTube channel? I can certainly do it. He's got some dank memes. Uh, he the does. Dankest of They're memes. They're actually hilarious. I yeah. love watching them. And Atro has actually been editing videos okay. for me lately too, which is amazing. He does good shit. Like he does very very good shit. Yeah. So, so we actually get content from Tofu. I mean what? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> got, got him. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Anyway. No, uh, <laughs> I'll link that shit too. Closing. Uh, so, yeah. 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 Thank you guys all for watching. Uh, closing, if you guys have anything to say. Closing words. Coming this summer, Dead by Daylight 2, Electric Boogaloo. Hell yeah, With dude. More sprint burst and less snow ed. More sprint burst. More sprint burst. More decisive strike. Less snow ed. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. Order now. I'm, I'm, right. We're, we're, we're ending the podcast. We're, we're ending it. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for Bye. watching. Very well, friends. See ya. See ya.